Okay. Hey, hi Max. It's a great pleasure to talk to you today. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Anand Chingran. I'm the CTO and of IBM's Information Management Division that deals with all things data, whether it is databases, content, integration, and business intelligence. But also, I play a second role. I'm part of IBM-wide cloud team, and I'm responsible for and co-chair the cloud computing architecture board that I run along with a couple of other colleagues within IBM. This is great. So Anand, what, what do you see has, um, you know, different about cloud um, computing when it comes to data and, and trying to data analysis, uh, analytics? Hmm. Oh, uh, that's a great question because, I mean, if you look at what are clients using uh, cloud computing for, you find that, yes, a collaboration, for example, has definitely made it to a very, very common workload um, with respect to cloud. But the second, almost immediately, the second kind of dialogue that I have with the clients is around analytics. Now, why are my clients having dialogues around analytics and cloud? There are two aspects to it. One is that they feel certain level of pain within their enterprises with respect to the delivery and consumption of analytics. And they feel that cloud-based analytics can take away some of those pains. But it's not all about pain reduction they also see significant advantages or what I call gain that they would get out of cloud computing. And this gain kind of comes in two forms. One is that enterprises deal with a lot of data that sits in the house, that's absolutely true. But more and more enterprises are beginning to use data that is outside their firewall. And for them, this data can actually come from some open data sources, could come from data.gov, could come from DBpedia or Freebase, but could also come from the supply chain partners and others. So what the clients are thinking through is that, as it is, an increasing fraction of the data comes from outside their firewall boundaries. So is it really efficient for them to actually take the data all the way inside the enterprise, run the analytics, and then deliver it back to their business partners and to other people who are interested in it? So both from a pain perspective, reduction in, in the in the difficulty of delivery of BI within the enterprise, but also more importantly from a gain perspective, uh, my clients, the clients that I deal with, are looking at analytics as a primary work. Great, but is this a, a, a question of saving some money or, or using the fact that a lot of their data is coming externally, or is it is it about, um, um, you know, uh, saving uh, infrastructure costs that they would have to keep track, they would have to, uh, you know, provision for lots of this data that is transient. So what, what, what is the, the benefit for the client? In so there are two, again, there are two aspects of cloud. One is a pain reduction. So if you take kind of a hundred units of pain, let's say that I've got to get some PI reports delivered within the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And there are certain hundred units of pain. Those pains could come from ramping up the infrastructure, managing the database, managing the application, managing the delivery of BI or whatever it is. Take certain hundred units of pain. Cloud and a cloud-based delivery has the ability to significantly reduce from those hundred units of pain so that you don't have to try, you don't have to acquire the infrastructure. You can even sometimes not have to acquire the skills. You can significantly increase your deployment and others. But that is just one side of the story. The other side of the story is what can you do in cloud that you actually could not do before. So for us, the reduction in pain is important, especially in today's climate, it's very important, but that's, that's only one half of the story. The gain, what you get out of cloud that you couldn't get otherwise, is what is really important. And, and there, uh, Max, uh -huh. if you recall what we're talking about with respect to our smarter planet, which is all about how do we make the cities, the companies, the governments, and the world smarter by discussing the interconnectedness, the instrumentation, and intelligence associated with it. Those are perfect workloads for cloud that could now only happen because of the availability of the data and the availability of computation. So, so of course, it's not all woozy. There are some issues that we have to deal with. And obviously, the, the issue that most probably likely comes at least when, when, when we talk about data on the cloud is 
well, is it secure? Is it, you know, my privacy going to be respected? And then as companies see the data as being critical, like you like to say, um, you know, how do you deal with that? I mean, what are, what are some of the things that, that, that we could do, for instance, as a conference to help? Or what are some of the things that you're doing? So I'll, I'll get to your conference part of it in a minute. Okay. But, but frankly, after I talk to my clients about, about cloud, mm -hmm. the very first hand that gets raised <laughs> with all of my clients is, but what about data security and privacy? That is absolutely topmost in our clients' minds. And there are two or three things that are going on. There are certain things where the data, where the business policies and data policies are so critical that they would never make it to the external cloud. But for us, our belief is that that does not necessarily represent the majority of the workloads. In fact, there's a significant amount of workloads where the data policy and business policy issues are manageable. They're manageable with the right handshake between the enterprise and the external cloud. And in that, I'll give you, I'll kind of give you two examples. One is, for example, from an IBM perspective, of course, we have been doing a lot of outsourcing and we manage the IT of a lot of large companies where the clients have become very trusting of the fact that they can depend upon a company such as IBM to look after their data. That's number one. And number two is that, that it does require kind of a, a careful discussion between the IT, the line of business, and the CFO and the legal officers within an enterprise to kind of think through whether the business issues and others are manageable or not manageable whether the gain that you get from the cloud is more than sufficient to actually compensate for the pain that you might get based on certain data and business policy issues. And almost always we have found, almost always we have found that with our clients that there are certain workloads where the gain versus pain equation actually pays off in the favor of the cloud. In going to that conference, how could we help in the conference? I mean, you know, UPSA is a conference, you know, where programming yes. advances happen, Absolutely. but also system and others. And certainly for cloud analytics, uh, MapReduce probably is a, is a start of it. So do you see, for instance, us helping in, in the next generation or next kind of parallel data computation Absolutely. stream programming? Where, where, where would you recommend maybe or, or, or indicate where we would go and, and focus? So I, I, of course, I mean, uh, big data, data really took off because there was this thing called SQL that allowed people to actually decouple the application and the data logic. And that unleashed a huge innovation in the data area and a huge innovation in the application area because of this, this standardized interface. For the next two or three years, the model for building cloud-based data applications will partially evolve from how the SQL world has done, will partially evolve from certain new paradigms such as MapReduce, and will partially evolve for certain things that we haven't even seen before. And I expect uh, conferences such as Oopslas and others to actually guide us with respect to these new uh, programming paradigms around data and data in the cloud. But there's a second aspect of it, that what we know for a fact that cloud will not be instead of enterprise IT deployments. Clouds will complement and live with enterprise IT deployment. So what is really important for uh, folks in Uppsala to kind of think through is not just think of a pure cloud world, but think about how data can actually interoperate between enterprise firewall boundaries, within enterprise firewall boundaries, and the external world. What are the security, privacy, encryption issues? How do you actually program the data policies? How do you ensure that the benefits of cloud are not lost if you have to send way too much data from the enterprise to the cloud side? So how do you actually program around it so the right amount of computation can flow to the the data in the right place, et cetera, et cetera. Really, the innovation has to be around the hybridization, not just around a pure cloud model. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Jingrung. And uh, this is Anna Jingrung, again, at uh, the IBM Silicon Valley 
uh, Labs in San Jose, California. Hey, thank you, Max.